Yeah, hey guys, I just want to start this video by saying I hope with all this stuff going on, it's a really loud bird, uh, with all this stuff going on with coronavirus, COVID-19, whatever you want to call it, um, I just hope that you and your family and your friends and whatnot are safe, uh, regardless of what country you live in, because I know the situation is kind of different by country, sort of. Um, here in America, we're kind of taking it the least serious out of any country, I would probably say. Um, and that's not exactly a good thing, but, you know, it's not too bad here in Arizona, where I used to live in New Jersey, New York, where my mom and grandma live. It's kind of a little bit more serious there because just the population density is so much worse. I just really just wanted to say, you know, I hope you guys are all good. I, you know, best of wishes. But anyways, yeah, I just wanted to mention that with all this going on. It's a weird, weird times we're living in right now. Um, but I also wanted to show you my front clip that I got. No, I'm just kidding. You guys have seen this already. Um, seen this plenty of times. Hasn't really been touched, as you guys know. Um, will finally be taken apart today. So I'm gonna start taking it apart, essentially. What does that mean? That means just taking off the hood, the fenders, the headlights. Um, basically what I need to take off to get to the core support. That also might mean taking off the clutch fan, which I hope not, because I hate taking off clutch fans, they suck. But whatever, whatever I have to do. But yeah, we're gonna take the core support out and the, the tub on that side, because as you guys know, we need that piece and then probably take out the dash just because the dash isn't really essential it's just more of a you know I don't know just a pretty looking piece because I'm gonna have to start getting all the wiring ready to like push through and stuff um, and all that fun <laughs> fun 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 stuff but also on top of it um, I forgot to show this to you in the original front clip video but the thing came with a key in the ignition and it's actually very good because I realized R34 is the only Skyline besides 35 if you consider that a Skyline that has the chipped ignition, meaning just the key being cut in the ignition isn't going to turn it on. It actually needs a chip that will register to the ECU or to whatever system that will then you know start the car so it's kind of really good so essentially speaking especially because this has power locks and windows or you know power locks, power doors, alarm. Essentially speaking, as long as I transfer everything from the wiring here correctly to that car, everything should work with this key. Uh, the R34 is exactly where I left it with the front core support, still like that. Um, I haven't really worked on it. With this whole coronavirus thing, my job situation hasn't really changed at all. I work for Amazon. So now if anything, even more people are ordering stuff to not go out of the house to buy stuff. And that means Amazon has raised wages for us. Like they're paying us more. There's a lot more shifts available. So I've actually been working a lot. Like I've been working like 50 to 60 hours a week, um, which I guess is a lot. This week I'm really not working much and this is that's just mainly a scheduling thing. So I decided to actually do some work on the Skyline. I've been adventuring a lot on my days off lately. I actually sold the truck, the F350 tow rig that got this car, that got the R32. Cause I just didn't need it. I don't plan to get any more projects, you know deliver them or anything like that so I just didn't really need it it, ju it just sits there I don't daily it or anything I daily my motorcycle and with that I actually got I actually bought a BMW motorcycle uh, an adventure bike like a dual kind of dirt street cruiser touring bike it's an R1200 GS uh, it's a really 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 cool bike I wanted a bike to more like explore with and it's honestly kind of like low-key the perfect bike because like I've already done some pretty cool off-roading with it, which is like super fun. And then it's an awesome cruiser. It cruises the highway 80 to 90 miles an hour, no issue. Uh, me and Rachel actually took a trip two days ago where we went all over North Arizona, like 250, 300 miles with her on the back. And she like loved how comfortable it is and stuff like that. And you know, it has the big boxes for storage. So it's basically a really cool version of the old KLR 650 I had, because this thing is a 1200 and it still has like decent power. I still have the Kawasaki ZX-10R. Uh, that's currently about to be repainted fully because sadly my friend borrowed it. He kind of dropped it at a slow speed and now he's paying to have it fixed so then I can sell it. Um, but that's kind of enough with the bike stuff because I know you guys don't really care about the bike stuff in my life. Maybe some of you do, but anyways, I'm gonna just get to taking this apart.
So I actually took the, the really straight fender because as you guys know, one side of that front clip is like perfect, the other side is kind of crashed. So the fender's pretty dented and the headlights cracked. But this is the good side. Kind of put it on. Obviously it can't really be on because the core support is uh, kind of, you know, not there. Because I believe the front of the fender actually bolts to that hole right there. Um, but I also did take the strut tower thing off and just threw it on just to see if it fits. I mean, it should fit, obviously, same chassis, but yep. Just coming around over here. Can't really get too many good angles, but yeah, that's a that's a GTC fender. Obviously, it's not bolted on the bottom. That's why there's a bigger, a bigger gap right there. I mean, it's not bolted anywhere, but yeah, the, the door isn't really even adjusted, quite honestly, either, because I think the door could go back a smidge because of the gap back here kind of hard to show you with the black and white contrast because the camera won't focus that well but yeah I'm probably gonna move over to just taking off this uh, core support just finishing up that and then uh, I'll continue on the front clip because I'm kind of just gonna be moving between one and the other in this video So now that I got the rad support off, I already uh, threw it back in the shed. I'm gonna focus on cutting that tub out. Um, I decided I'm not actually swapping both tubs because I looked at the tub on that one here and it also has a hole just like that. So it's not really, it's kind of gonna be wasted work. It's just the fact that I want this stuff to be straight, which it is. Um, this car has been, it's very weird to describe how this car is. I'll probably explain it someday, but essentially, a lot of the parts in this are off of a front clip, meaning are swapped in and the front clip got hit from that side. So this was like kind of unbent. So essentially I'm just gonna cut along here, cut up there, and then cut that and just get the tub out. And then I'll do the exact same thing with the front clip tub, which is perfectly straight. And then I'll probably just tack it in and then run, se run seam sealer along it. Um, and then I can do the core support. And then with the core support, same thing, just you know, fill the pinch welds where I did them, which is just essentially just a bunch along here, uh, along that tub, and then it's on the top, it kind of sandwiches in between these two plates, and this gets hammered down and welded, and then seam sealer once again. So now um, 
What you just saw in the last clip was actually me removing the uh, ABS because we will be deleting that. I think I'm also going to be deleting it on the R32 eventually as well. But it deletes the, the mess over here and I don't really care much for ABS. But it'll make it simple where there's just a line going to the, um, sorry, there's a line going to that wheel, line going to this wheel, and then there's going to be a line just going to the rears. And that's it uh, from the brake booster. Um, now, I also have to remove that like those lines because those are actually believe it or not this thing actually had a ca18 in it um ca18 det from a 180sx in it because i think he had a complete 180sx with everything in it so he just swapped all the guts into this car essentially i think he drove it around like a little bit like that but obviously that's not needed for an rb um the vacuum canister whatever it is so i gotta remove that i'm just removing like a lot of the stuff in the bay and then probably next eventually is just gonna be the, the clutch I probably don't have to because I could just tape off around it to spray. The brake booster I want to remove because like I said this one has like a ton of surface rust on the bottom. And the uh, one in the front clip has like no surface rust or anything so I'd much rather use that one anyway. But yeah as you see I cut out the tub, uh, the core support's gone, all that stuff on the floor is brake fluid. Because I literally just cut the metal lines because I don't care because I'm going to be switching to steel braided lines anyway. Plus I'm, I'm not even actually, I'm literally not even using this entire front end anyway. That's the funny thing. Believe it or not, I'm actually um, going to drop this whole front end. Because um, this is out of an S14 I'm going to be using the one out of the R34. Mainly because it has everything ready on it. Like it has the Cusco arms, um, Cusco tension rods, Gretti coilovers. So I might actually just be dropping the motor and trans on the subframe and then lifting this up and like rolling it underneath it or something to bolt it up and then same thing for the rear end is it's, it's also an s14 rear end so i'm going to be switching to the r34 one that i that i have laying over there with the gretty coils and Cusco arms and everything just because i want all gretty or i i want all r34 stuff and um i want to see how this car is actually set up since i don't think they touched the alignment or anything on it either so it actually should have pretty normal alignment so i just want to see how the car is set up with camber and how low it was set up and stuff like that. So that would be cool, but. Hey guys, so um, haven't really been recording today as much. Obviously, this pa this entire video so far has been like the past three days, believe it or not, just because I've kind of been, you know, taking my time, not rushing. But uh, I'm pretty close to pulling out the motor now. It's not happening tonight. But my friend Bryce with his Subaru actually came over and he helped me get the harness out. So as you obviously saw in the video, I took off of the radiator, the condenser, the fans, uh, that center core support piece. Um, I have the AC lines now out fully, the canister for the AC. Um, we also took out the AC unit and the core and the heater, the the heater core heater, heater core heater core. That's what it's called. <laughs> um, I probably won't be using those simply because that car has never had its dash bar taken out and it's already all there. So then with this car, uh, 
yeah, that's we had to do all that to get to the dash harness. But essentially, we unplugged the chassis harness for this side, which is now sitting in that car. And now we pulled out the full uh, engine harness. This is the full engine harness on the motor. Uh, I'm not going to unplug every injector, every coil pack, any of that stuff, because it's just so much easier to leave it plugged in and then run the harness back through. Now there was um, this engine harness comes here with this piece, and it connects to the harness that takes it all the way here to the fuse box. And the fuse box is really what gives it power comes through here that's actually the fuse box uh, we had to kind of dissect the fuse box to get it like that and then we're gonna after I take the motor and transit I'm gonna have to actually take it out push everything back out through and then obviously repeat the process for that car but um, I did a good amount of work today so I'll continue on to the next day tomorrow I work but obviously after that I'll just continue on to the progress you see the whole intercooler kit you know I'm kind of keeping the parts somewhat together I have all the radiator, AC, condenser, lines, um, some interior parts over there, but yeah, it's coming along. So guys, as you can see behind me, did it. This is what happens when, I don't know, I guess I feel like doing something for three days. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, like I said, I've really been just kind of not doing. I've kind of just always been going out, uh, riding my bike, usually driving the R32 whenever I got a chance, but now with the whole quarantine thing, and just because this week I really, I worked only yesterday. Otherwise, I probably would have got it done yesterday. Um, yeah, I did it. We did it, whatever. Uh, you saw Rachel help me lift that thing because it was kind of heavy. I mean, I don't know what it weighs total, but you could tip it yourself if you really want to. But we got that out. There's still things to get in this car, but I think I'm going to end the video here um, simply because I guess this video is going to be like taking the drivetrain out of the front clip, basically. I mean, that's the majority of what I need. Um, this is the harness that I have to still pull one way or another through. I'm not really sure which way. I think this side has to go through and that will be all moved into that car. But before that even starts, honestly, I'm just gonna do the core support stuff. Uh, I'll probably get to it. I don't know, maybe I'll start tomorrow, but I just have to do the pinch welds exactly what you guys saw me do in the beginning of the video on that car. I'm gonna be doing to this, uh, cut this tub out. I probably won't even do the pinch welds that connect it to the tub. I'll just cut it out and remove it together so I don't have to weld those together. And then this is just gonna go onto that car. And then we can prep this engine bay for paint. Spray it the color it's gonna be. So next video, I know I said this video is gonna be the color reveal, but the next video is gonna be the color reveal. Um, I mean, a bunch of you already said it, so. You know, I've been watching Initial D, but that's not really the reason. P.S. If you haven't watched Initial D, please do. I always listen to your beat, but I've never watched Initial D, and I finally did. And I'm on, like, the middle fourth stage right now. Amazing show. So much better than Fast and Furious and Need for Speed and everything. Don't kill me, but it's true. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be 
prepping that bay. As you guys saw, that bay is already primed, but I will be putting new seam sealer here and stuff like that where the tub is gonna be welded and primer it again, spray it. And then once that's all done, then we can, essentially we're gonna have to slide that underneath. Um, it's gonna be weird because first of all, I should have thought about this, but I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to turn that around. <laughs> I'm gonna have to move all this stuff and back it out. I don't even know how I'm gonna back it out because I don't even have any room. I'm gonna have to move this stuff somewhere. Luckily I have a lot of room, but I'm gonna have to back that out. I'm gonna have to back that out, turn it around, put it in, take that whole front subframe out with the coils. And I don't know if I'm just gonna have like two to four people come over and just lift it dumb high and just slide that underneath. Cause that is doable. I mean, the front frame rail just has to get this high and then you can slide it all in. And then, cause I, I wanted to keep the harness together trans together the subframe to you know like i'm not i could do it but that's just i want it all as one unit because although it seems like it's a lot more hassle and it definitely is a lot more hassle in these rocks um i yeah it's it's, it's gonna go to that my my kind of goal is by the end of this quarantine i want that thing to run and it'll probably drive because i do have the drive shaft i just probably need to buy an abs delete kit for the brakes to work that's really it but then we'll be able to drive it with no windshield or back glass or interior or anything but whatever that's that's the plan for that car uh, i've been really putting in the work on that thing if you guys haven't realized but see you guys in the next video as always thank you so much for watching supporting etc um this has been a nice productive three days of my time uh once again i hope everyone all of you are safe your family's safe etc in this virus scenario so peace out see you guys in the next video